one of the most basic natural resources, salt. Armies needed it for myriad purposes, the most important being the curing and preservation of food. Warlord Takeda Shingen's home province of Kai was landlocked. It had no direct access to the sea. So Takeda was forced to import salt from other provinces. This became an Achilles heel during an incident in which Takeda's province was besieged by two enemy forces at once. They managed to essentially put a blockade around Kai and, and embargo salt, which of course was rapidly creating intense suffering in Kai uh, with the idea of, of essentially starving the Takeda war machine to its knees. Well, just as things were getting darkest, so goes the story. Over the hill and across the pass comes a, a mule train or a horse train of, of pack horses sent by Uesugi Kenshin carrying salt and essentially running the blockade. Afterwards, other counselors and such asked Kenshin, well, why would you do that? Why would you rescue Shingen? I mean, he was on his knees and he would have been out of your way. And, and he replied, battles are to be won with swords and spears, not with rice and salt. Inevitably, after decades of frequent battles during the age of the country at war, specialists in sword technique and other fighting skills emerged in due course and gained notoriety. These men would eventually be called upon to share their knowledge, and their insights would prove enormously valuable to both samurai and other fighting men for centuries to come. Graceful, aging training hall on the grounds of Japan's elite Tokyo University. A group of committed students spend their evenings practicing kendo, the way of the sword. Kendo is a modern form of competitive fencing. But this activity began as an important martial art, one born of traditional samurai schools of swordsmanship. Kobayashi Hideo heads the university's kendo program. There was a set of primary fighting skills practiced by every samurai. It was called Buge Juhapan, the standard 18 martial arts. And these included horseback riding, archery, and others. And kendo was one of them. It was a required subject. Kendo was really the most important one. In very early forms of the art, students practiced with solid hardwood swords. But over the years, to keep things safe, these heavy sticks were replaced by lightweight, flexible bamboo versions. Students today also wear wire face masks and padding to protect their bodies. After an extensive warm-up, the students square off in fencing matches. The outcome of each match is determined by a point system that gives credit for successful strikes. The shout or scream a combatant utters when he or she strikes is called Kiai. It's used to help integrate the body and mind and create a strong spirit in the intended cut. Since it is such an intense game, manners are very important. Kendo really values etiquette, so it starts with a bow and ends with a bow. The earliest forms of kendo were actually born in the age of the country at war, a period of time stretching basically from 1470 to 1570. Since the daimyo had to win battles to stay in power, they sought out the top military specialists in the land to train their samurai. Until then, most military training was very informal and mainly family-based. Beginning in the 1400s, you start to find warriors reaching out beyond that and you find warriors that develop reputations as particularly good fighters uh, or being particularly good with one or another weapon beginning to systematize what they're doing and, and to begin to, to think in, in more depth about okay why am I winning all of these fights and, and suggesting that maybe I can teach this to other people and so began the mentoring of the samurai the courses of instruction many of these experts put in place for the daimyo went on to become the basis of formal fighting styles, or schools. The founder of one of these styles, and one of the greatest swordsmen in Japanese history, was Sukuhara Bokuden. Born into a samurai family in 1490, Bokuden became one of the most accomplished samurai of all time. 
He fought in more than 30 major battles and at least 19 instances of single man-to-man -man combat in which he killed his opponents. His skills brought him fame, but along with that came an annoying and dangerous byproduct, frequent challenges from other samurai who wished to test their prowess against his. For years, Bokuden eagerly rose to these challenges, but as he grew older, his attitude about engaging in such needless combat changed drastically. Eventually, he adopted the outlook that it should be the ultimate goal of a martial artist to resolve conflicts without coming to blows, or at a minimum, without causing unnecessary bloodshed. This, however, did not stop young challengers from trying to provoke him. Once on a boat trip across an inland lake, a young aggressive samurai began trying to goad Bokuden into a fight. The other samurai keeps pestering him and, and, and pestering him, and he finally decides that he's not going to get rid of him. So he says, OK, well, look, we, if we're going to do this, we don't have room on the boat. Let's go over on shore. There's an island over there where we can be dropped off over there, and we can fight there. Well, as they pull up on shore, and the other samurai jumps out of the boat, then Bokuden cast off and pulls back out in, in the stream, leaving the guy shouting at him and saying, well, what are you doing here? And he says, well, what my style of swordsmanship is, involves fighting without fighting. Bokuden lived to the ripe old age of 80, dying of natural causes in 1571. Traces of his renowned fighting style can still be seen in several forms of the Japanese martial arts today. Many of these forms teach either unarmed techniques or combat using wooden weapons, such as the bamboo sword in kendo. But there are a few remaining styles in which the true soul of the samurai, the actual steel-bladed sword, is still central. One of these forms is Iaido. Iaido is the art of reacting to a surprise attack by counterattacking with a sword. Samurai studied Iaido to train their minds and bodies to deliver swift, immediate, and direct responses to aggression. The art taught them to eliminate unnecessary physical movement from their sword technique and to calm their spirit in order to achieve a peaceful and harmonious, yet very active and ready, state of mind. In Iaido, uh, the movement is not simply to learn how to cut or destroy the human being, but it's more the emphasis on the correctness of the form and the correctness of the mental attitude, the proper focus, the proper blending of how your spirit and how your body and how the sword can move as a perfect integrated unit. In its solo form, Iaido involves a series of proscribed movements designed to defeat imaginary opponents. At the moment, the person has the sense to attack. The sword is drawn, the opponent is cut down, and the sword is returned to the scabbard in one motion, almost as if nothing happened. A two-man form also has preset routines of movement, but performing them with perfection takes years of disciplined effort. What you see is that the swords barely touch. This is the epitome of sword technique. You never touch the other person's sword, but you move in and cut him in his unprotected area. So the sword is always a cutting weapon. It's not a weapon to block or defense. Since few practitioners of Iaido today will ever have the actual need to cut down an opponent with a sword, the true appeal of studying the art is the attainment of self-discipline and the alert, calm, and confident state of mind it brings to dedicated students. For the 16th century samurai, however, martial arts training was less about obtaining a calm state of mind and more about learning to kill one's adversaries. The techniques developed by men like Tsukuhara Bokuden helped him do that very efficiently. As a result, there would be no lack of bloodshed in the closing centuries of samurai rule. Japanese historians sometimes refer to the age of the country at war as the time in which the low oppressed the high. Some of the leaders who emerged as most powerful during